cars are rarely as crucial to their makers or buyers as this E-Class model is to Mercedes. This full-sized executive segment contender is the backbone of the German company's range and a perennial favourite of the corporate car park. Improved saloon and estate versions of this 10th generation W213 series model retain a sensible side but dial up the desirability, aiming to offer a smarter, more prestigious approach to executive class motoring than close competitors. They do so with more efficient engines, cutting edge drive technology and comfort that makes you question the need for a larger luxury saloon. Rivals from Audi, BMW and Jaguar still have quite a benchmark to aim at. Some full-sized executive saloons in the States claim to be sporty, like uh, versions of the BMW 5 Series and the Jaguar XF. Others, like this one, uh, simply don't feel the need to try that hard, unless an AMG six-cylinder or V8 power plant happens to beat beneath the bonnet. It does it doesn't here. Uh, this improved version of the W213 Series E-Class is probably the last generation model made that will predominantly be sold with a diesel engine. So in recognition of that, we've chosen a black pump fueled version to test here today, although it is rather an unusual one. This E-Class is the only car in its segment and it's virtually the only car on the market that can be had with a diesel plug-in hybrid powertrain and the WLTP efficiency results are impressive. Uh, for this saloon, a combined average of 235.4 mpg and up to 33 grams per kilometre of CO2. Plus you get an all-electric driving range in the 31 to 34 mile bracket. All of this EQ power tech is part of an increasing move towards electrification and that headlines the changes made to this 10th generation E-Class model. Two of the units on offer you can plug in. Uh, this E300 DE model is paired with another EQ Boost badge variant, the petrol E300E. And two others get a mere dusting of electrification in the form of the brand's mild hybrid 48 volt tech. You'll find that with the lineup's two primary petrol power plants, the two litre four cylinder unit found in the entry level E200, and the potent inline six cylinder unit that features in 367 horsepower form in the E450 and in 435 horsepower guise in the performance orientated E53 model. Mercedes is additionally making this 48 volt mild hybrid system available on the main engine that E-Class customers in our market tend to choose and that's the 194 horsepower 2 litre diesel found in the volume E220D model although it hadn't yet been fitted to that unit at the time of this test in summer 2021. All the more powerful bigger capacity models in the lineup have to be had with the brand's 4MATIC Plus four-wheel drive system, the 330 horsepower E400D diesel, and the two petrol Mercedes-AMG performance models, which also get full air suspension, namely the E53 variant uh, already mentioned, and the wild 612 horsepower V8 E63. We found that each of the engines work well with the wafty, relaxed gait that characterises this Mercedes, aided by effortless changes from a further refined version of the brand's 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed automatic gearbox. And the experience is further embellished by the optional Active Distance Assist Distronic system. Now that's technology that we've been trying here, and it allows the car to virtually drive itself in traffic jams or at highway cruising speeds. One of the defining aspects of automotive design lies in creating styling characters so brand specific that badges are hardly needed. This W213 Series E-Class model has always delivered that. It could only be a Mercedes. But what kind of Mercedes? Well, you might have expected the changes made as part of this midterm facelift to take it aesthetically closer to its larger S-Class stablemate. Instead, the styling updates added to the saloon and the estate variants that we're focusing on here actually position these body styles visually rather closer to the next model down in the range, the W206 Series C-Class. This remains though a stylish piece of design. The powerfully extended silhouette is characterized by short overhangs, a long wheelbase, uh, large wheels and taut well-defined flanks. The swept back power domed bonnet flows down into a grille that's been turned upside down. It's now wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And a bit disappointingly, it's now no longer possible to have it with an upstanding bonnet ornament. 
It's even more different at the rear, or it's at least it is with this saloon body shape anyway, which gains much wider, now horizontally orientated LED tail lamps, which now get segmented by this restyled boot lid and sit above this revised bumper. Now at first glance, there don't look to be too many improvements over what went before, but delve into the detail and you'll find that quite a lot's different here. And that's thanks to the change to the brand's more sophisticated MBUX infotainment system, physically evidenced by the switch to this centre console mounted touchpad interface here. The multimedia colour display uh, that helps to control this pair of bonded 12.3 inch monitors is now standard across the range and it can also be activated by touchscreen or by the provided voice activated control of Hey Mercedes. Also improved is the steering wheel, now a capacitive touch sensitive design incorporating a restyle which allows for two separate bars of switch gear to be installed along these two horizontal spokes. The dash and fascia design doesn't have the dramatic, futuristic appeal of the latest S-Class. The next generation version of this model will doubtless have that, but at first glance uh, there's much the same feeling of opulence and quality. Plus the powered heated leather seats are perfectly contoured and they're fitted around the driver to give ample comfort during long trips. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now the doors open nice and wide as you'd want in a car that's often used in Europe as an upmarket taxi. And the first thing you find inside is more than ample space. Again, no great surprise given this E-Class model's private hire popularity, although headroom might be a touch tight for those over six foot. If the front passengers have their seats at the lowest setting, you might find room for your feet slightly limited, but otherwise the rear footwells here are big and broad, uh, plus there are pronounced knee room cutouts in the front seat backs. Let's finish with a look at trunk space. It's rated at 540 litres for this saloon model, an unbeaten figure in the class, although it does fall to just 370 litres if you opt for a plug-in hybrid variant like this one. A standard 40-20-40 split folding backrest allows you to extend the boot area if need be. The alternative estate body style remains the most spacious in the segment. It offers 640 litres of boot space in conventionally engine form and that can be extended to 1820 litres by folding the rear bench. In summary, this is in short very much a 21st century full-sized executive sector conveyance. True, it is slightly more expensive than the competition. Uh, also, there are rivals you could choose which would be more dynamically rewarding to drive, although, as Mercedes well knows, that kind of thing doesn't tend to be prioritised by many likely customers. Certainly, if you can see beyond those two issues, then what's on offer here remains arguably the ultimate statement of technology and luxury in this part of the market, and possibly even a package good enough to leave you really questioning the need to spend more on a larger S-Class model. The best or nothing, that was the slogan that Mercedes founder Gottlieb Daimler lived by. If it's yours too, then we think you'll like this car.